All right, so first and foremost, congratulations on coming. Um, I appreciate it. Everyone have a good time last night at the meet and greet? It's good stuff. People love the meet and greet. And, uh, you know, I was talking to a couple of people this morning, and it's kind of like, uh, you know, we'll get a lot of phone calls and emails, and some people will say, well, I can't make it, or for whatever reason. And like I was telling you guys this morning, it's almost like you got your kids, and you wish you could just take your wisdom and knowledge and just plant it in them, because if they could see what you see, understand what you see, they would take better actions, and they'd make a better choice. And that's why the meet and greets, I think, are awesome, because at the end of the day, you can come here and, and learn from other people as well as me, and, you, and so many of you guys are in a different position within your business. And um, I'll tell you, it's definitely, definitely, um, very humbling for me, very flattering for me, and um, it, you guys bring me a lot of honor. You really do, because I hear you guys talking to other people, especially some of you guys who either come to some of my previous seminars or you've been in business for a while, and I hear you guys talking to other people, and as I listen to you guys, I hear you guys kind of re re reiterating some of the seeds that you've picked up from my DVDs and resources and everything, so it's very, very humbling, and, and uh, you bring honor to me, so I want to thank you guys for that. So I really appreciate that. So let's dive in and get started. We have a lot to do today. So I want to push through as much as possible so we can uh, ultimately I want to get to a big Q&A session so you guys can answer questions. So common provider patterns around the country as I work with providers, uh, varying degrees, um, newbies, people who've been in business. I mean, there's some people I work with who started their business long before I was in business. Um, so I kind of run the gamut. So some of the common patterns that I'm seeing right now, number one, so many people right now are oblivious to the changing dynamics of our industry. I can promise you right now our industry is changing. If, from where you were two years ago to where you were now three years ago, it's different. And as I was talking to some of you guys last night, you're telling me about your uh, competitors, your local environment. You're telling me how they, you know, how they, their place in their in the market, how they act, things that they do, their patterns. I promise you, if they don't take action, if they don't adapt to the changing economy, they're going to be obsolete. It's coming. Our economy. People are oblivious to the economy. I promise you, the economy affects you in a great way, and so many people are oblivious to it because they either stick their head in the sand. And let's face it, everyone's busy. We're all busy with life, we're all busy with our business, job, life, love, and pursuit of happiness, but guess what? They don't, they don't invest the time and effort to learn what's happening, and the economy is affecting us in a big way. Um, a lot of people do not understand the inter interrelated policies. Let me just throw one key word that maybe you heard of this, Obamacare. If you've heard of that, I promise you, it's changed in our entire uh, landscape. A lot of people ask me, well, is that good or bad? Well, there's both. Okay, now I can promise you this in my biased opinion. Um, Obamacare, is it bringing good by design? No, here's what's bringing the good news. There is more opportunity, I'm telling you right now, but don't think it's because of Obama and the policy. The reason why there's, there's more opportunity and there is good is because of people like you who are the motivated entrepreneurs who are gonna get out there and dig the ditches, bootstrap your business and you're gonna build it. You know, you entrepreneurs are the innovators and the backbone of, this, uh, of the economy in the country. So people are oblivious to the changing dynamics of our industry, the economy, the interrelated policies that directly influence our industry, the ability to make money. This business, so many people will contact us. They follow all that free stuff online, the happy, jazz, e-how, Yahoo answers questions, whatever it's called, I don't know. And people will contact us. They think getting into a business is easy as just go get a vehicle and some insurance and pass out business cards. As many of you know who've been in business for a while, uh, no. You know, uh, who was I talking to yesterday? Someone, uh, um, was it Stephanie, who you bought the, uh, you bought some other ebook on how to start a non-emergency medical transportation. She saw, she's like, this is crap, this is a waste of $60. And then she said, she saw ours, you know, invested in it, and she saw what a stark difference. And then she ended up, you know, this is the real deal. And then she started getting the DVDs and stuff like that. The, con the funny thing is we'll have people contact our office. They'll ask us for a refund for an ebook. Come to find out they're not asking for a refund on our ebook. It's someone else's ebook. You know, that's, we're like, uh, sorry, wrong company. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, any business, not just the NEMT, any business, it's not as easy to just start up, get insurance, hand out business cards. Here's the good news. There is a lot more opportunity out there, I promise you. You're gonna see it throughout the course of, of today. There's a lot more opportunity with sound, strategic, key word, strategic, and tactics. <laughs> tactics. I threw tactics in there, because as a West Point grad, a little military guy, you gotta get a little tactics in there. Sometimes you gotta outflank your, uh, 
your competitors. I'm going to show you stuff throughout the course of the day, especially in our Q&A. I guarantee you some questions are going to lead us into some good tactics. Some of you guys may have picked up in, uh, in my newsletters. I've been talking about this for a little bit. Um, some of you guys are literally sitting on a financial empire. Um, as I work with some people and I go and I look at their business, and I analyze their numbers and their, you know, where they are in their market, um, it's just amazing. It, what you don't know, you don't know. And sometimes what you don't know hurts you. And some, some people are just sitting on absolute empires and they have no idea. Um, I'm telling you right now, even though the industry is changing as much as it, as it is, there's a lot of money to be made. Um, the second thing I noticed, the second common aspect is once people become aware of it, now this is key, once people become aware of it, they don't know how to pursue. Pursue, key word, pursue. Pursue is in I'm getting off the sidelines, I'm going to get proactive, and I'm going after it. All right. So a lot of people, once they do, so if I'm here and I know success is there, how am I going to get there? A lot of people don't know how to get there. You've got to pursue it. Don't know how to grow or restructure their business to be competitive. Industry's changing. How are you going to grow, modify, adapt your business? Don't have infrastructure or finances to take advantage of new opportunities. There's a lot of people sitting on gold mines, but guess what? They don't even know how to scale their business, put the infrastructure together, have a hard time getting finances. They don't leverage, keyword leverage. I love that word. I could write novels about leverage. There's so many places, leverage, leverage, leverage. There's so many people out there that will tell you that business is all about location, location, location. We're a service-based business. We go out and we service the community. Whether you're NEMT, home care, we go in and we service the community. I don't care if you're, you know, some of y'all read my eBooks and everything. You're starting small. You're starting from your living room kitchen. That location doesn't matter. Technically, you can start out of your closet. I don't care. Leverage, leverage, leverage. So people, once they are successful and as they're growing, they don't know how to leverage their current position to maximize market opportunities. So some questions to ask yourself. What are your current market conditions? Uh, some of you guys have invested in like the market analysis where my staff and I, we literally will research and we'll make phone calls and try and gold mine and, and dig uh, you know, learn more about your market. Now, once we get that to you, guess what? You got to take it to another level. You got to follow up on some of those phone calls and dig even further. We're going to give you all those leads and everything, but guess what? Your market in North Carolina is different than Florida and Georgia. Everyone's market, and even within Florida, you're going to have multiple markets. Uh, what are your future, future market conditions? So many people that I work with, they are reactionary. They wait for change to happen, and then they have to adapt to change. All right, what, what's the saying? Uh, there's people who um, watch things happen, people who make things happen, and people who say, what the heck just happened? I'm telling you, you need to be ahead of the game. You gotta ride that wave. Again, that's why I congratulate you guys in coming here. You took the time. Some of you guys traveled a long way. You paid money, you spent time, and, and I know traveling isn't always easy. So again, I commend you because, I mean, you're investing in your education. I always tell people, invest in your education, especially when we're in a dynamic market, a dynamic environment like we are right now. Where do you fit within your current market? Where do you fit within the current market right now? Are you an impact player or are you reactionary? Are you part of your market? Are you an industry leader within your market? Or, is there, or, or does your market influence you? Big question. Where will you fit? Where will you be within the future market? So where are you now? Remember, uh, as I've talked to some of you guys, hey, it ain't about where you start. It's about where you finish. It's about where you're going. It's about the journey. So I, hey, I, I start with one vehicle. I'm cool with that. Uh, you know, Augustus came to one of my seminars, what, two years ago. He had one or two vehicles. He's at 14, 15 now. And I can tell you more success stories, so guess what? I'm all for humble beginnings. I love the stories. I love hearing you guys talk about them. You know, ain't about where you start. It's about, about where you finish and the journey across it. How does your business interact within your market? How does your business interact within your market? I'll give you a couple of quick examples. I got some people out there who, again, started, came to a seminar, started with nothing. And it's like anything. When you start your business, the hardest part is getting going. 
The hardest part is getting momentum. You get a handful. How do you get those first couple clients? Once you get those clients, how do you get them to build steady momentum? And once you get it, I call it breaking the floodgates. Position yourself within the market, become an expert within your market. So all of a sudden, you get those floodgates to start breaking, and then you're going to have a problem trying to plug. It's like trying to plug the leaks. All of a sudden, you're busy. And guess what? That's a good problem to have. All right. So. I, got, I have a couple people out there who literally position themselves to become experts within their industry, within their market, to the point where they do radio interviews, they've been interviewed on TV. All that publicity within their local market makes them an expert within their market. And these are things that they're not paying for. But guess what? Now they've been in the, they've been in the market, they've have a, they're establishing their brand, they're establishing brand recognition. So guess what? People identify them as leaders. They're actively involved within their community. How do you interact within your market? How do you scale your business? How do you grow it vertically? How do you grow it horizontally? How do you scale your business to meet the needs of your market? I'm going to tell you right now, you want to make money? Solve someone's problem. It does, I don't care what business you're in, service, whatever. At the end of the day, if you want to make money, you've got to solve problems. So by our very nature, as entrepreneurs, we're problem solvers. Key objectives for this event. I want to make sure that when you walk away, you firmly understand the changing landscape. How it affects you, you personally. How it affects your business. Now, why do I say you and your business? Because right now, you are your business. If you're a newbie, you are the business. You go into a facility, are you trying to sell that we've been in business for 10 years, we've got a fleet of 50 vehicles, we have so many people working for us? You don't have that. So you are the business. Now the goal is to, again, success is over there, I'm here, I need to bridge that gap, how am I going to pursue it, how am I going to get there? And along the way, what's going to affect you? How does the environment and the landscape affect you? And then once you start to pull yourself away from your business so that, number one, you could diversify into other things. I mean, let's be honest, we're here to make money, right? I mean, if, if we're not here to make money, if we, if we don't make money, we cannot only just, we can't help, not help ourselves, but we can't help anybody. Um, and also, I want you, when you walk away from here, I want you to clearly be able to, and you don't need to tell me, but you need to be able to tell yourself, this is the trajectory, this is the direction that we're going to move in. So some of you husband and wives teams, this is the direction we're heading in. Some of y'all that are single, maybe you're newbies, this is the direction that I'm going to head in. Some of you guys may have been in business for a long time. I was going here, but guess what? I realize I need to be going in this direction now. So I want you to walk away with a firm trajectory. I want you to have a new perspective. I underline it because perspective is everything. Perspective is everything. I personally believe that at the end of the day, if you were to boil it down, we all want the same thing. Do we all want to be happy? We all want to make money. We all want you know, life, love, happiness, all that kind of good stuff. All right. What separates us, in my, my opinion, one thing that separates us is just our perspective. We all want happiness. We all want to be successful. But how we go about getting there, we just have a different perspective. All right. So you may have come in here with certain, uh, a certain perspective. You may leave here with a different one. In fact, I think some of you will. Um, so with a new perspective, I want you to be able to identify new opportunities within our changing industry. I want to equip you with necessary knowledge and understanding to pursue and take advantage of these new opportunities. I want you to financially thrive, not just survive. Key. I have a handful of disclaimers, I got to tell you. We're taking a long, journey, a long journey today down a narrowing path. As, I start, as we start digging into this, I'm going to be broad. I'm going to give you a macro scale. I want you to think macro. All right? If you think micro, you're going to be micro. Where you are in your market, that's great. But guess what? I, there's people who I work with who operate out of three, four, five different states. Is that macro or micro? That's macro. You want to make real money? You can't think micro. You want to duplicate your business, streamline your business, develop systems, policies, and procedures so that you can start making money around the clock. And I promise you, you can make money 24-7. And you should be. When you leave here, you should be making 24-7. So at 3 o'clock in the morning when you're sleeping, 
you should be hearing ching ching in that bank account. Every single day there's money to be made. Joel, you sound so greedy. No, no, it's not about greed. God wants you to be successful. God wants you to make money. So as we go throughout the course of the day, you're going to see I'm going to narrow this down. We're going to take some left turns and some right turns. We're going to get there. So have an open mind. Uh, uh, again, in this DVD series here, I mean, this is probably the most, in terms of content, this is going to be the most. So we've got to push through it. We don't have time to go through everything. So some of you guys who haven't studied the first two DVD series, the Million Dollar Transportation Seminar and then the Boot Camp Seminar, when you get back home, get them. We'll make sure you get them. All right, you've got to study those because we don't have time today to cover a lot of that stuff. So many things are changing in the industry. We've got to keep moving. So study the other DVD series before this one. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, I refer to myself as a biblical capitalist, and I make no bones about it. I'm a capitalist. I believe in free markets. I don't believe that the government is going to make me successful. I believe I'm going to make me successful through hard work, through God's divine intervention. I think that God, I know that God gave me my abilities and sound mind and everything. And, and at the end of the day, all goodness comes from him. So I got to continue to honor him as I build my business. I got to give glory to God. And again, I'm about the free markets. And he, you, I challenge anybody here, tell me where the government got involved in something. You could say, that was a great job. Oh, man, they ran that. Oh, they saved money. I challenge, I challenge anyone to show me that. God wants us to prosper. And every once in a great while, someone, I, I haven't had it in a long time. But back in the day, I would get emails periodically. Well, well you're, you're, you're charging these people. You're taking advantage of them. OK, I'll do it for free, and I'm going to pay for this how? So if me providing you service and you paying me, that's a good thing. Not only do I need to take care of me and my family and make money, but guess what? I got to help other people too. And that takes money to help other people. God wants us to prosper. Again, I'm a steward of my money. I don't own my money. God's given me sound mind and great ability. So he's given me the ability to make money, but at the end of the day, it's not my money. I'm a, I'm a steward of my money and my business, and I challenge you, you need to do the same thing. If you want to be blessed, you need to be a good steward. I believe in tithing. I'm going to tell you right now, you've got to tithe. I'm telling you right now, you've got to tithe. Now, I love numbers. I love numbers. Uh, some, of you, some of you guys in here, I've worked with you in the past. Some of you I'm working with right now. I know your numbers, and you, you, you can attest that I love numbers. Why do I love numbers? Because numbers always tell a story, and the story never lies. The story never lies with numbers. It's the biggest truth, I, unless you're going to give me some made-up bogus numbers. All right, but here's the thing. I know numbers. I know how numbers work, but I, don't know how, I, don't know, I have no idea how God's numbers work. Well, I'm telling you this. If you tithe and you give it back, God's going to bless you. And I can't tell you how. I just know it works because that's, that's God. If I knew how it worked, I would be God. Uh, we got to give. we got to give. you got to give above tithing. All right? Now, what's giving? You go out there. Do random acts of kindness. And, again, tithe your 10%. But I'm telling you, go out there and give. Give of your time. Give of your effort. If you remember your church, get involved in your church community. Give back. Um, give more money on something. If you, uh, you know, my, my Personally, my, my thing is my tradition. Every single time I go through Dunkin' Donuts, I always pay for the person behind me to the point where there's a Dunkin' Donuts right down the street from where I live. So every time I, I go through the drive through the lady always knows, you know, I'll, I'll pay. And then she'll say, all right, um, you know, $3, $3.50. Well, she already knows I'm paying for the person behind me because I do it all the time. And then sometimes someone will screw up my mojo because someone will pay for me. And I'm like, that's, that's not... Yep. That's not supposed to work like that. <laughs> right? So my point is you got to pay it forward. And trust me, you will be blessed. I am a constitutionalist. Now, some of you guys have, may never heard of it. But ironically enough, there was this uh, interesting document called the Tonsta Constitution. And this country used to follow a constitution. Um, so I'll let you interpret that from there. But... <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to offend some of y'all today. And, and I make no apologies because I'm not a politically correct person. So, um, so some of you, well, because I'm not politically correct, I'll say it. Some of you sell out Republicans, you may not like me today. Some of you crazy Democrats, you may not like me today. I'm a constitutionalist. 
So putting things in context, let's start diving in.